So today we're looking at lead code number 33. It's a question called search in rotated sorted array. It's a very popular question. It's very frequently asked by a lot of companies. Um, you can see here Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, it's all over the place. So it's a very good one to know and it's not too bad. There's a couple different ways to approach this and we'll look at a brute force solution which is almost trivial and then we'll look at a more efficient solution which I think I think what it I think this the efficient solution is what would be expected in an interview if you if you came across this question. Okay, so we have an integer array num sorted in ascending order with distinct values. So there's no duplicate values and prior to being passed to your function nums is rotated at an unknown pivot index. Okay, such that the resulting array is going to be nums at k, nums at k plus one, nums at n minus one, nums at zero, nums at index one, and so forth. Zero index, for example, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, might be rotated at a pivot index of three and become four, five, six, seven, zero, one, two. Given the array nums after rotation and an integer target, return the index of target if it is in nums or minus one if it's not in nums. Okay, so what are our options on how to, how to solve this? The first thing that, that would come to mind is just do a linear scan. You can just do a trivial operation where you just do nums.index of target and it will return the answer. And we can just kind of test this out here that there's a brute force way of doing this that is almost trivial where we could just do something like return nums dot index of target run this and it should it should give us a solution okay now I, I highly doubt that this is what they're looking for so let's look at a more efficient way what would be the time complexity on that solution it would be linear time because underneath the hood what index of is doing is it's scanning the array and finding where that elements index is now can we do better can we get this solution in log n time and the answer is yes yes we can do much much better okay so let's take a look at how we would do that let's see if there's any constraints here one is to 5000 okay all values of num are unique and nums is guaranteed to be rotated at some point all right so the thing that should come to mind is if if you're dealing with anything that's sorted then we can look at binary search as a solution using binary search you can only do it if the list is sorted and in this case it is sorted but there's a slight there's a slight difference or there's slight um, constraint on it is that it's not sorted in order, there's the pivot index. So it's pivoted, but it's also sorted. So how can we think about binary search when we're approaching this particular problem? So the idea behind binary search is, is we're gonna have a left pointer and a right pointer. We're gonna calculate the mid, and it's like a phone book. We're gonna, if we know it's sorted, then we can just divide up the list in half by whether that whether that list half in that range if the target is in that range okay and so if it is in that range we keep on dividing that half until we get to the target so here what can we do if we're going to implement binary search so let's say we have a left pointer here okay and we have a right pointer and our target here is going to be zero our mid initializes here at index three now what we can do is we can say which side is sorted. Only one side will be sorted, okay? So here we can say, okay, is the left less than the value at mid? And if it is, if this value is less than this value, then we know that this left side is sorted. We, else we could also check, is the value at mid less than the value at right? It's not, so we know the right side is not sorted. Okay, so first we want to check the sorted side here at this left. Is the value at left less than the value at, at mid? It is. Now we want to do one more check and we want to check is the value at t here, okay, is the target in this range? So is, is left uh, less than or equal to target? 
and is is le, um, is target less than uh, the mid, okay? And it's not in this case. So we know that our target is going to be on the right side. Okay, so I'm going to just explain that one more time. First, we're going to check, is the mid the target? Okay, so is the value at mid, does it equal the target here? It does not. Then we want to figure out which side of this list is the sorted side. Okay, so we want to check, is the value at left less than the value at right? If it is, then we know the left side is the sorted side. If that's true, then we just want to check, is this target in the range of our sorted side? And unfortunately, it's not. And so what do we want to do? We know then that our target is going to be on the right side of the list. And so we just want to move this left pointer over here to mid plus one. OK, we're going to calculate a new mid, which is going to be uh, uh, the left plus the right divided by two. OK, and now we want to check, is the value at mid the target? No, it's not. Is the value at left less than the value at mid? It is. So we know the left side is sorted. So let's go into the left. We're going to go ahead and move this right pointer over here to the left and then calculate the new mid, which is just going to be at right. And then we check, is this mid equal uh, the target? OK, it does in this case. And we have found our answer. And we just return the indice of 4. OK. And so let's take a look at why this is more efficient. How many operations are we doing? We're just splitting this list up in half on each operation. So we can think of this as a tree. Let's say our first, first operation is what, where we were initialized at, where we have our left over here. Whoops. Our left pointer over here and our right pointer. Don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and reset all this so we don't have everything moving. We're going to have our, our right pointer over here, our left pointer over here, and our mid pointer right over here. Okay. And when we have that, our first operation, what does our tree look like? We, we want to think of this as a tree for binary search. This is going to be our first operation. We'll have our first node of our tree, our first split. Okay, now we want to check, is it in the left or is it in the right? Okay, it's in the right, so we're going to go on the right side here. And when we do this, what are we doing here? We're going and taking this left pointer and pointing it over here and putting our mid pointer right over here. Okay, so that's our first split. Now we want to check, is it on the left or is it on the right? It's on the left, so we're going to have a next node here on the left. OK, and we're going to go ahead and move this right pointer right behind the mid. And then our new mid will be calculated and we made it to the end of the list. So we can see here, instead of scanning through this entire array, which at worst case would be the length of the array here, by dividing it in half on each level, we can accomplish that. We can find out whether that value is in the list or not in just three operations. OK. So what's our time complexity for that? It's going to be O of log n, okay? because we're using binary search, which is really good, which is great. What is our space complexity? Well, we're not creating any new space. We're not creating any new arrays. There's no space that's being created relative to the size of the input. We are creating these variables like left, right, mid, and, and so forth but we're not creating any new space. And so our time or space complexity on this will be constant. Okay, which is pretty pretty good as well. So let's go ahead and code this up. Okay, we'll jump over here into the code. I'll just go ahead and refresh this. Okay, and so what do we want to do first? Well, first we want to go ahead and create our left and right pointers. So we'll have let left equals zero, let right equal nums dot length minus one. 
Okay. And now we want to just say while left is less than or equal to right, what do we want to do? Binary search, we want to just first calculate our mid. So we can say let mid equal uh, math.floor. Now you could do left and right divided by two, but um, when you get into really, really large numbers, uh, that might become an issue. So a better way of calculating the mid when you're dealing with binary search is to use this method where we're going to do left plus right minus left. Okay, and then divide that by two. And why are we doing that? Because if we do left plus right, that might turn into a huge number that, that, that the language not, might not be able to hold. And so because of that, we don't want to, we, we, you want to use this method. It's a little more efficient when the numbers start getting really, really big. Okay, so now that we get to that point, what do we want to do now? First, we want to check is it, which side is sorted? Which side of our array is the sorted side? Because we're dealing with this pivot, right? So we want to check if, um, yeah, we can do it this way. We can say if, uh, n uh, let's see here, nums, at left is less than or equal to nums at mid, okay, then we know that the left side is the sorted side. What do we want to do now? We want to check is the target in that range, right? So we want to say if uh, nums at left is less than or equal to target and target is less than nums at mid. And one more thing we want to do before that is just make sure that if if the mid is the target, then we want to go ahead and return that mid. So we want to say if nums at mid equals target, just go ahead and return mid. Okay, so now we want to check if it's in that range, okay? Now, if we are in that range, what do we want to do? We want to update our right side. Right is going to equal mid minus one. And if not, then what do we want to do? We want to update the left side. Okay, left is going to equal mid plus one. Okay, now we want to do another else. If the left side is not the sorted side, then the right side must be the sorted side. So if that's the case, we just want to do a mirror version of this. We want to just check if it's in the range. So we want to say if um, nums at mid is, um, I'm sorry, if target, I think here, if nums at mid, is less than target and target is less than or equal to nums at right. Okay. Yes, we know that that's in the range, okay? And so if that's the case, what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and update our left. Okay, so left is going to equal mid plus one, else right is going to equal mid minus one. Okay, and then once we get out of that, we just want, even if it's not in there, then we just want to go ahead and return minus one. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run that, and we're looking good. Okay. So that is, that's how you do this using a log n approach. Um, you want to use binary search, want to implement binary search. You want to check the left side. If that's the sorted side, then check if it's in the range. If that's not in the range, then we know it's on the right side, even though it's unsorted. And then we want to just do the same thing uh, on the right side. Okay, so this is a fun problem, and I think it's one that, 
allows two different approaches. And if you can, if you can know those two different approaches of using a linear approach versus using a more efficient log n approach, um, it, it just, it looks really, really good. And knowing this log n approach, anytime you see anything with sorted array, a sorted list or an assorted array, binary search should automatically come to mind. That's just like, it's like a golf club or a tool. Like that's just something that you should initially immediately think of when you think of sorted lists. So um, this is just a play on binary search. It's just a slight modification because we're doing this rotation. Okay, that is lead code number 33, search in a sorted array. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.